that was well played by my opponent in, in there. But I think we had a bishop for just a couple pawns. GG. GG. Okay, wait, let's play a Von Hennig against this. What's this guy's rating? <laughs> 2475. Got a Von Hennig gambit on the board. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> oh yeah, gambit glass is on bishop f5. Good move. Keep those stockfish moves coming. Keep them coming. You gotta play bishop g6 here, or else I take it and take it with the power of that pin. Yeah, that was a decision I needed, didn't need to spend so long on. All right, so now we got the bishop off of this diagonal. So we have our bishop takes e6 sacrifice, our favorite one. Land the knight on e6. And knight here, she's so strong. She stops castling both ways by controlling these squares. Puts a lot of pressure on g7 to prevent this bishop from moving. If g7 falls, then, then like that knight can fall. And also ties the queen down to this fork. So keeps the king in the middle. Hurts the king from being in the middle, and the way to defend her is to play bishop g5. So takes, if you play rook e1 immediately to try and win the queen there, there's knight e4, right, to try and win the queen with this pin. But now takes, we have takes f6, and pawn takes rook e1 in that position, picks up the queen. And that's still actually the engine's recommendation. Okay, king f7. I guess we play here probably just d5. d5 seems good. So king f7 threatens to take our knight, right? Because rook e1, there's nothing to win. So let's play your d5 to protect our knight for a sec. Pawn takes. Something I want to play there is just knight takes. But maybe we take f6 first. I'm still thinking about that. But the thing is, if they play pawn takes, right? Now after knight takes d5. First of all, our knight... Uh, yeah, well, it's going to block that check with the bishop. So okay, d5, bishop, b4. But, okay, this is probably losing for them, because I'm going to play queen d4, attacking this and attacking this. Or, I could play knight takes g7. Because queen d4 still allows bishop e7, d6, maybe they hang on, uh, maybe uh, a little bit unclear. But knight takes g7, I think, is quite clear. Takes, takes c3, take, looks good. There's a lot of time I spent, but... Oh, king takes is a no. I'm just going to eat this. Yeah, having my queen on d4 would be nice now, but that's okay. Now I take, and also queen d4 check takes the bishop. I mean, not that not like that rook's going anywhere. Something else I'm thinking about is takes, and if queen takes d1, takes b7? That would be outrageous. Just outrageous enough to work. It's so unnecessary. I think my position's winning regardless. Oh, no. They have just pawn takes c6, right? Takes pawn takes c6. Okay, I'm just going to take here, and I'm just going to be up material. I'm just going to grab that. So queen d4 check. Yeah, bishop c5, they couldn't throw that in, because I would play bishop d4 to block this check. Um, and now we're just going to eat the bishop. In fact, now we're up material. Oh, and we are up that. Nice. So that was that was a nice game in the Von Hennig. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's have a look at that. Should probably analyze my loss there too. Would have learned more. All right, we had ninety three six accuracy. Sorry, you guys can't see. I'm gonna zoom out. There you go. Now you can see. Uh, okay, so we had a Von Hennig against this um, twenty four seventy strong player. Takes bishop c four. Uh, of course, the engine is not a fan of that. But it's a von Hennig gambit. Knight f6 to protect the pawn. f3. Takes, takes. Uh, and so now, the point is we're playing against this bishop. Against the bishop's development. If e6, we castle. We drop this bishop back to d3 for these. And then we play queen e1. And because they don't have like this bishop out to control this diagonal, what we can do is put a ton of pressure on h7. Any point of h6, we take it. Any point in g6, we're happy about that. We just kind of use the dark squares uh, and make a lot of threats. And otherwise, you know, let's say they play b6 here, trying to get this out. What we do is we play bishop g5, we play knight e5, and we threaten to sacrifice to get rid of that knight and check me on h7. And it's tough to defend, because uh, h6, I'll take it. So that's that line. And then bishop g4 we can we is, is a nice trick. 
of um, it wins a piece here, genuinely, because e6 we play an hg4, but we give the queen for their king. So here there's bishop f5, which is as played in the game, but castles e6 and hg5. So we keep coming after this, right? So that if they could get castled, they'd be okay. Uh, but otherwise, right, we want to take this and take this, use the pin here. Uh, to pick up a pawn and destroy their king positioning. So bishop g6, so finally they dodge all the tricks, they put the bishop on the right square, if they could just do this, but that's when we hit him with the sacrifice. And the move to know here, if you're black, is f takes e6, I mean, is the engine's wreck, but h6 also makes a lot of sense here, and then leads to some um, positions here, where white is a little bit in exchange. What I like to do here is white is put the bishop right on e5, can't really be touched there, or else the pawn would win that knight. Uh, if the pawn were to attack it. And bishop goes right to e5, and just, just a lot of pressure here. Like, they can never really get safe, because at minimum, you can force g takes f6. Queen comes there, knight comes to e4, all the rooks come in the game. So still, white's well, having a lot of fun here. Uh, in the game, takes e6, and knight takes d6. And then the engine's wreck here, I think, is to take the knight, and just to give the queen. Just to, like, literally give the queen here, and try to have, like, a few pieces uh, in exchange in this position. Uh, which is a rather interesting position. Um, king f7 is also playable. I just wanted to check what it is. Okay, it's queen g3 there. So, interesting stuff. King f7. Um, I've not analyzed the alien gambit. I gotta show... Oh, yeah, bishop h5, queen h5. Okay, I'll, I'll get to that fate. I'll get to that. So, my opponent played here this move, king f7, which makes a lot of sense. Um, of course, the ancient wanted that queen sack. But king f7 here, and so d5. Um, it's telling me an accuracy, but then it actually, when I'm looking at the engine, it says it's the best move. So, here, d5. So, yeah, pawn takes d5 is not working. d5 was a great way to defend this knight, because now I have knight takes d5. Oh, wait. Yeah, maybe it wants me to throw in this. Takes, and now knight takes d5. So, now we're threatening rook takes f6 if they want to pick up this. Uh, and otherwise... Oh, it got two exclaims. So they can keep defending, you can keep playing queen d4, you can keep piling up on this, because, like, queen takes, rookie one. Such a fun position. So many targets. All of white's pieces. Just doing such great jobs. So really crazy lines. Um, but that's not what happened here. My opponent played not a good move, which is bishop to b4. Yeah, if you're going to develop the bishop, you should put it on e7, so that after knight takes, you can at least hold your knight here. But here, what I would play is, yeah, queen to f3. Now we reintroduce the threat, so like let's say they're just trying to develop, we introduce the threat of like knight takes g7, uh, eliminating that and eliminating that. So knight on e6 just does a lot of good stuff. Also rookie 1 here is another good move, because rookie 1 makes this next threat even juicier when you're going to play knight takes, and then take here to win the queen. <laughs> so just a lot of really, really fun stuff that comes out of this is exactly the sort of chess we want to play. And exactly the sort of chess that's just like impossible to defend in these time controls. So here we have 19 g 7 Shout out to chess.com for giving me a couple exclaims there. Um, yes, this is one of the best ways for black to play. This absolutely is. Um, and we got him anyway. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, I mean, I got prep everywhere in the Von Hennig. If you guys check out um, my other Von Hennig videos. So it takes... Uh, King G8, and then, yeah, I mean, it could have done this fun line, takes, uh, yeah, so, so they do have to go pawn takes, because queen takes D1, this is, I mean, this is crazy that this works, but C takes B7, um, so the queen's attacked, and we're gonna make a queen, there's no check on D4, thanks to this bishop, and there's no queen D5, thanks to this knight, which would have defended here, so you're screwed here, what do you do, like, you can save your queen, but then I'll win a ruck and make a new queen that's about to checkmate you, so... <laughs> Or you can save your rook somehow, but then, you know, this is also, like, I just eat everything. So, um, maybe, or maybe I, I, I lead with taking the queen, yeah? Because uh, I can always take that rook, too. So, just lots of things hanging. Um, uh, completely unnecessary, though, as I realized in the game, instead of being fancy, I just took that, and then check, and just ate that bishop. In this case, I'm up an exchange, and two pawns, and their king is torn open, so, um, they put them, themselves out of their misery pretty quickly there by blundering mate. Um, but yeah, fun game. Oh, Fate, you asked me to show, <laughs> um, uh, so Bishop G4, right? Because the Bishop on F5 gets attacked by the Rook, right? So why not put it on G4 before shutting the door by playing E6? Uh, it's because of Knight E5, right? So we threaten mate and attack the Bishop. Um, E6, we can take it. Uh, so they sh should here play Bishop E6, in which case this is still pretty bad. But, um, yeah, so Knight E5, really nice move. And what I've also gotten in a game once is they thought they could play Bishop H5. So, oh, the bishop's defended now and guarding mate, but we can set offer the queen again because uh, we're still threatening checkmate here. And in fact, there's really no way to get out of checkmate now because it's coming from both sides. So, um, fun, fun stuff here in this line um, in the Von Hennig. Uh, to do a 
full review on the Von Hennig is that one of the other lines that for a while I didn't like facing until I came up with something is this move bishop to f5. So not even a, like like not even making that trade. This is like a very high level move, I guess. Most for most people it's see a pawn take a pawn. Sometimes they even play e6, in which case it's just like what a like that's not that's more than getting just a pawn back. That is a beautiful center. And knight f3 castles. You still have that f file for your rook. Play e5. Still have that diagonal for your bishop and attack without even being down a pawn. Uh, and gorgeous tempter. But bishop f5 here, so, so trying to not even give you this um, development, just hold the pawn where it is. The line I recommend here, the engine's recommendation is g4, bishop back, g5. Just attack this knight and get your pawn back, which is uh, meh. But um, what you can do here is take c4, and after knight takes e4, bishop takes f7. I've covered this in another video. Uh, that looks much more fun than getting your pawn back, doesn't it? So king takes f7 and queen to f3 as you follow it up with. And so this is now a very tricky situation for, for black, right? Because if you're white here, you're down a full piece, not even one pawn. You're down a full piece. However, you're threatening two different pieces. You're threatening knight takes e4 using this pin, and of course you're threatening to just take that bishop, right? So if they just defend their bishop with e6, with queen d7, with any move, you just take that. And this is already very bad for black because they're dealing with this pin that can lose them another piece. They got checks, they got no development, lots of weaknesses, and their king is here, right? So not fun. Um, they can play your queen takes d4 if they're very greedy and just want this, like, one pawn. Because takes, they, okay, they can still save their knight. But here after knight to f3, hitting the queen, this knight's hopping around, um, probably hitting in the e6 outpost. Uh, they can get checkmated very quickly, for example, like knight g5 here is already checkmated. <laughs> uh, I think I had a game like this on Lee Chess, maybe. Something like this. Um, so this is not a fun position for black. Black here has really but one good move, and it's knight to d6, so who's trying to save both pieces for a second. You still have g4 here, so you're not losing a piece. Uh, and if you're white, the bishop comes to f4, king comes to cast, king castles long, nice and safe and sound here behind a few pawns going to be the only safe and sound king on the board because we're going to play knight to h3 and you're going to put the rooks on these files and this is the best way for black to play there's this very sharp move e5 that's the engine's top recommendation um if they play e5 they're 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 almost certainly a cheater so e6 here you can play uh knight to h3 is a, is a tricky move uh, don't lose this pawn you still need to defend that pawn it's very important or you can just grab your piece pack uh, right away also fine uh, but then yeah finish development castle your king Good files, still in the game of Chad Spirit, and this is, they've already found a lot of engine moves just to get to this point. AT6 is a tricky one. So so that's like the other way for them to play against the Von Hennig. And other than that, yeah, I mean, you, they gotta either blunder or go into that Bishop takes E6 line. So, you know, I mean, I mean, that's pretty much that. Uh, I mean, they can also play this move E3 if they're like really desperate, but this is just, you know, White has a nice uh, development advantage here. Uh, well, what can I say about this? If they try to play Bishop F5, what I like to do in this line is, so, okay, knight e2 and e6, right? So we play your g4, and now knight to f4. And the reason I like this so much, so so we're hitting, we're, we're pressuring that bishop, right? But but my point isn't that I want to take it right now and just play h takes g6. Their structure's solid enough. Maybe I give them this file. My point of putting the knight on f4 is that I want to play, uh, like, at some moment, I don't know, it's, okay, so, so now it's better, h4. And right now, the point is we're threatening to play h5 and trap the bishop. And now they have to move this pawn and so they want to put it there, but the point is, so as soon as they move the pawn, I take g6 and ruin their structure, and in this case, the pawn is just hanging immediately. So by already attacking the, the, that bishop, then you play h4 and try to attack it. But otherwise, so queen d2, try to trap it, rather. Queen d2 castles, king's going to be very, very safe over there in all cases. So really, in this case, I think they should shut the door on their own bishop with e6, and... Um, Lots of options for development here. I think it's as simple as here. Queen d2, castles, bishop d3. And you could probably expand here. I, I expect them to castle short. So already probably a head start um, in in sort of, sort of attacking race. c6 is not looking like a very useful move here. Um, white has four pieces out. Here, black has but one. So, uh, I mean, it's playable, but it's just a pretty nice advantage for white. So I think that pretty much covers all the options <laughs> that, that Black has in the Von Hennig here. I mean, 95% of people take this pawn. There's not really many other options here. I've seen like a6 or g6 a couple other times. But, you know, you can just kind of play chess with knight f3. But takes, and they, of course, they really expect you to play mainline Kara with knight takes e4. And bishops to c4, jumping on this diagonal is already uh, quite a shock to them. So yeah, that's the Von Hennig. Um, and we totally recommend. Works at all levels. Let's keep it rolling. Okay, we got a cm. I'm Michelle182. Am I working on new gambits? 
I mean, always. I'm always trying to come up with new ideas. I always kind of think like, oh, I'm out of ideas. Like I've covered all the lines. I've I've checked every like like. Believe me, I'm checking things, um, trying to come up with uh, things that I think are playable as we get a Von Hennig here. So I'm always coming up with new gambits in the sense of that. Working on new gambits, yes. William, I found your YouTube channel a few days ago. Best channel I found in a long time. Love your style of chess and the enthusiasm that you have for it. Long live the game, man. That is so sweet. Thank you so much. That is, that is, that's why I do what I do. Coming up with crazy lines like this Von Hennig here, where my opponent has played all the stockfish moves, but I have an insane win rate in this position. That is very nice. Yeah, I mean, I like coming up with new things. I like... Contributing to chess theory. I like the idea that, ooh, as they leave g7 a little soft. Wow, I've got a few ideas. I also even like taking d5, but take g7 has to be the best move here. Yeah, this is killer. Exactly. And I mean, they, they literally just played one wrong move and now we're just completely lost. Yeah, I don't even have to take that rook. He's not going anywhere anytime soon. Their only saving grace is that the bishop is there. But we have your d5. There's no knight d7 because that will take away your last square. Yeah, I think d5 is very strong. Um, just on principle, I want to open things. And also queen d4 can threaten to win even more material. And even take c3, might I might just go check and... Mm, check. King c8, take. And just try sneak there. It's very unnecessary, though. Like, even if I just, like, literally hang out, I think they're toast. I, I, I'm, I'm almost down nothing. Like, imagine, like, I get that exchange. They have two bishops for a rook and two pawns, plus that king. So looks good. But yeah, like I was saying, I mean, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Like you know, you see the same lines played played over and over at top levels, and they kind of think that they've checked everything. But chess is just so vast, and I want to. I just wanted to keep discovering things. I think takes is very good, among other nice options. Um, if only because queen e2 and I can take that knight. So knight c5 they play. Again, hang on by a thread. But I think they cut their other thread. This is mate. Knight d5 is also brutal. But yeah, queen e2. Oh, oh they have, um, I guess, a block on e6. Now, it would allow me to take that rook hole if they used that block on e6. Knight b5, I think, is most effective. Knight d5 is also very effective, but I think this is most effective. Queen d6 is also very good. I'm also not seeing how, how why that wouldn't just checkmate immediately. I'm overwhelmed. I think everything wins. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to find a move that doesn't win. Okay. <laughs> yeah, knight d5 won, queen d4 won, uh, queen d6 won, cb7 won. This is also probably pretty good. Oh, okay, and they resign. That kind of scared me for a moment. Uh, okay, well, we can run that back. It sent me a rematch. Actually, I'm going to have a look at it. Creativity is off the charts. Aw, that's so sweet. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I understand this very much, because I make my own prep a lot. 
And it's like, you have the engine right there. You understand how much better it is than than you or than anyone. And you're trying to squeeze every single, like, centipawn out of it, out of the eval. Um, and it's so hard not to get ca- caught up in that. But it's like, so in analysis, it, 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 like, makes sense. But then you put that in any game situation and it's like we're so far off from that anyway that the most important thing is making it difficult right um exactly the human component as you put it so yes this is the von hennig um i've talked about this a number of times uh but there's yeah take e4 bishop c4 we take that diagonal they protect the pawn f3 take take bishop f5 so bishop f5 is a good move if they can finish their castle here they're not going to give us this diagonal so this is a good move and hg5 yeah bishop g6 is needed because otherwise we are threatening to take and take in either order uh so they need to get out of the way of that and now is when we play bishop takes e6 so um yeah the i think the like engine often if it thinks for enough, starts recommending h6 over f takes e6. Um, and indeed, h6 is an interesting try in this position. I've also even faced some people just declining this altogether. Never checked this. Yeah, I do just end up going back, and it's just kind of equal, which is a little bit unfortunate. But yeah, so takes, takes, and the point here uh, against either queen d7 or queen d6 is just bishop g5. Because this knight is so, so, so good. It stops castling both ways. Puts a lot of pressure on g7, as you saw in the game. Bishop to b4 was one mistake, and immediately knight takes g7, just ends the game. Um, it stops casting both ways. And so if we can hold it here, then it's just super good. And bishop g5 does sort of hold it there. Because if, now if they take it, we take f6. And now we have rookie 1 with no knight e4 coming. So if they recapture here, uh, they can play this king d7 line. Which is kind of interesting. Bishop h4. Still trying to play d5 and open this up. But this is... Like, they, they literally have to be stockfish to play this. Uh, otherwise, pawn takes f6. I've also faced this queen sacrifice a couple times, which is a little interesting. They have a rook and two bishops for a queen and a pawn, which is more than a queen and pawn. But their king is, you know, quite open, and we want to kind of get him with d5. So, anyway, the knight's uh, indirectly defended, although they couldn't go for it if they want to. My opponent didn't and played this move bishop to b4, which is just a disaster. Um, not that it's easy to play at all. If I get a couple moves here, I'm going to play like queen e2, rook e1, something like this. Lots of pressure on these files. Of course, I'd love to play d5, open everything onto that poor king. Uh, so really, really fun piece sacrifice here, uh, even though they've played literally every move correctly up until this point. And now bishop to b4, and one more move, and the game is resignable. Because, yeah, I take g7, and bishop takes f6. Um, yeah, th that pawn was an important pawn and needed to, in turn, be for fortified by the bishop to fortify this. Because, yeah, we have that hit on the rook here. Queen g8. Engine wanted them just to l give up hope of recapturing there, because now queen g8. Uh, of course, I'm not going to take that rook right away, because it's there anytime I want it. So let's hit him immediately d5 which is a good move, but queen g4 is apparently even better. Oh, because of that resource. Wow. I just got so many resources and so many winning ideas here. Uh, also, rookie one. Uh, so the king is really going to have no squares, going to have to go into the f-file, where, like I said, it has no squares. So, yeah, the, the queen g4 would be good knight for them. d5 is just very principled, just trying to open everything, and also use this knight. So, like, knight takes d5 would be very nice. Hit the bishop, hit this. And even more things open up here. Uh, so that's good. Knight a6, and I just played the very simple d takes e6, just by virtue of, at minimum, I can take this knight, uh, and at maximum, I can maybe checkmate their king. So, yeah, I mean, for, for this sort of attack, you would have to sacrifice a whole lot, and I haven't even sacrificed really much. Uh, knight c5 and knight b5, among other moves that are winning. Queen d6 is... The fastest route to mate, as we were looking at. Yeah, it's just the idea of bringing that other rook into the game. And now the knight can't move because of queen d7. And I'm also fighting queen e7. So, uh, yeah, and the other rook's coming into the game. But knight b5 is also using a piece that I wasn't using before. And looking at knight c7 and knight d6, where, again, the king has no squares. Uh, so my opponent played bishop a5 and resigned before I could get in knight d6, king f8. And some finishing touches here. What would the finishing touch have been? Check and mate, perhaps. Yeah, that's mate. So yeah, I mean, there's like, this is just a feast for my pieces. I mean, uh, or, or just 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 a fun game there, uh, in the Von Hennig against a good opponent. 
So that's good. Can we keep going here? Let's keep going. William Grave, the Gambit Man, takes his seat at the board. E4. E5. Knight F3. Bishop C5. The Bush Gas Gambit on the board. On with the Gambit classes. Hero Pod unlocked. 